Okay, in this lab, lab 18, we're going to look at uh, buffering solutions and we're, there are two parts to it. The first part, um, we're going to create one buffer. Um, so here we have our acetic acid and we have 25 um, mils in the graduated cylinder. Here we have the sodium acetate powder form. So we're going to weigh out about four grams of this and to create an aqueous solution. We have our 100 mil beakers, our pipettes, our small graduated cylinder, the scale. Um, make sure the scale is ready to go. You may need to have to pull the tab out from the battery at the back. pH meter, I also have the buffer solution just to calibrate it before we get going. I have my stirrer, my sharpie, some distilled water with 100 mils of So now, the first part of the experiment, we're going to weigh out four um, grams of our sodium acetate. We turn on the scale for the weigh boat. We just need one weigh boat. I've got two here. Put one weigh boat on. We zero that out. And now, we add in, it says to use a spatula, but if you're careful, you might not need that. I'm just going to break it up, this is solidified a little bit. a little bit over. We're going to put the sodium acetate, the four grams, into a 100 mil beaker. So to our sodium acetate we're going to add 100 milliliters of water. stirring rod and we'll just stir that around. So the next step that you're going to have is to calculate the molarity of this solution. Then put a label on it and take a photograph. So next up we're going to take the beakers and we are going to label them A through E. There's A, B, C. Next we take the small graduated cylinder and we're going to follow table number two to prepare the buffer solutions for each of the beakers A, B, C, D, and E. We're going to be using this 10 mil graduated cylinder. Okay, so let's put our um, conjugate base, the sodium acetate, into A, B, C, D, and E. Um, following the table, we see that A is 5 mils, B is 1 mil, C is 1 mil, D is 10 mils, and E requires 5 mils. So I'm going to just put it into the graduated cylinder. Okay, five milliliters into E. So that's our basis taken care of. Now I'm going to wash out the graduated cylinder um, so we don't get any contamination. Now we're good, we don't need our sodium acetate for the rest of this section. We're moving on to the acetic acid. So now, again, we've got five mils of acetic acid in A, five mils in B, 10 in C, one in D, and one in E. So acetic acid into A, five mils. Get my mark. So once we have the five buffer solutions ready to go, we get our pH meter. And our buffer solution. Turn 
it on into the buffer solution. Give it a minute. I'm just going to get some distilled water. Measure should be 6.86. It's registered at 7 at the moment. So let's turn that back. Just dial it back a little bit. So it's 6.9. And there we go, 6.9 into the water. Just to clean it. And we're going to measure each of these, get a reading for them. Um, where there isn't much solution, you're going to have to tilt it back. Give it a, a few seconds. Here we're registering 4.2. So take that out, keep as much of the solution as we can. And we do the same for each of the rest. Now you've got the pHs for each of the buffer solutions. Make sure that you save the sodium acetate um, for later. Um, we're going to be using this in the second experiment for lab 18. So now we're going to move on to the second experiment, the first part of the second experiment. Um, here we have our acetic acid and we've got 20 milliliters of that and of the sodium acetate um, we have another um, 20, so 20 of acetic acid, 20 of sodium acetate, and we're going to take a couple of beakers, F and G. Okay, so into F we're going to put both of these, we're going to put our base and our acetic acid. Stir them well. And now we're going to take 20 milliliters from our 40 milliliter solution because we've got 20 of each. We've got 40 ml solution here. We're going to take 20 mils and put it from F into G. Okay, so that's our 20 mils, leaving 20 mils in here. So now we've got equal amounts in both F and G. And let's measure the pH of beaker F. Okay. Again, into water. Neutralize it. And into G, we'll take the pH there. Then I'll just record those values. For the next step, we're just going to move beaker G out of the way. We don't need that for now. Put in pH meter into some distilled water to dilute that down. We're going to concentrate on beaker F. Here, as you see, I've set up the Coca-Cola and I've got 20 mils. So we've already taken a measurement for beaker F. Now we're going to add some of the Coca-Cola in different increments to this beaker and measure the pH after each. First off, we're going to put five mils in. Five mils first. We know what the initial pH is. We've already charted that. Five mils in. We take our pH meter. Just 
flying off the shell. We put that in. Again, give it a few seconds just to settle. And we take our reading once it's stabilized. We're going to add another five milliliters. Just in on the top. Make sure you get it all. Okay. Taking our pH meter again. Climb off the sides, and we'll put that in, give it a little moment to settle. And once it has, we take the recording of the pH. And this time we're not putting five in, we're going to put 10 milliliters of Coke into Beaker F. Should be 10 mil left in here. Let's see. A little over. Okay, there we are. There's our 10 mil. We pour that into Beaker F. Give it a little swirl. Take our pH meter. We take our reading. And now we're going to take beaker H, not beaker G, beaker H. And this just has the water in it. So to this we're going to add five mils of cola. And we're going to take the pH. We have the initial pH of beaker H. We put our five mil of cola in there. We put our pH meter in. And once it's settled, we'll record that. So now that you're done with that, you have your table of results. Just take a photograph with your phone of these results and include them in your lab questions um, when you send them in. Now we're going to get rid of cola, H, and F. We still have G, which we're saving for part B. Now you can see that I've made some changes. I've got two clean beakers, one marked I and one marked J. Into I, I've just put 20 mils of distilled water. J is empty. We're taking the borax that was in the same packet for the buffer solution experiments or labs and we're just going to measure out four grams of this. So we've got our scale. Make sure our scale is on. Scale is set to grams. Put the wave out on. Zero it out. And now we're going to put four grams in here. And there we have our four grams, it's almost the entire thing. So we're going to put the four grams in to J, so it's solid only in J. Make sure you're not leaving any behind. You want to keep the four grams transferred. And into this, we are going to take some more distilled water. If you put 100 milliliters into a graduated cylinder, like I've done here, we're going to put that 100 mils into J to create a borax solution. 
We're going to take our borax solution 20 milliliters into the graduated cylinder. That is going to go into a clean um, beaker. Then we're going to take G contents and put it in on top of the 20 mils of borax. And there we go, that's our 20 mils. 20 mils goes in to the clean beaker. And now we have the clean beaker and the old G solution. And since this is related, we're going to call this one beaker G. Borax solution here is in beaker G, and in G we have the solution that we prepared earlier. What we're going to do now is to measure the pH. We have our pH meter in distilled water over here. We'll just dry that off. And then we'll put that into beaker G, into the borax solution. And you'll see how basic that is once you take your reading. So beaker G, borax only. That is going to be at a certain level, which you have to find. We put this back in to our water again. Okay, and now we're going to take five milliliters of this borax solution and put it into G. Okay, we already know what the pH is from this. I think you've recorded that in table four, I believe. Okay, so we're taking five mils. I'm going to take Two mils, put it in, another two mils, in, and one mil. Just swirl it around for a minute. And we're going to measure the pH and record that. So that's the pH level with five milliliters of borax in there. We put the pH meter back into the water, set it aside. We're going to take another five mils of borax, put it in with buffer G for a total of 10. Record the pH, so we have buffer G plus 10 mil borax. And we know since we measured um, a 20 milliliter amount of this borax solution that we have 10 left. So now we'll add this 10 milliliters of borax solution into the buffer. Make sure we get it all. Give it a little swirl. measure the pH one last time. So buffer G is the total of 20 milliliters of the borax solution. Gives us a pH of that. So the very last thing that we're going to do, we're going to take Beaker I, we're going to measure the pH, we're going to bring back our full borax solution,
we'll take our reading from here, make sure it's the same as what we originally had in the table. So into this we are going to add 5 milliliters of borax. So 5 milliliters of borax go in here, so again, 2 plus 2 plus 1 gives us our 5 milliliters. Swirl this around. Dry off the pH meter. And in we go. You just have to do the calculations then. Good luck.